Today, we are once again going to the land of the rising sun, Japan, a truly beautiful country with amazing cities, fantastic food, and just breathtaking culture. But Japan does have cracks, like any other country, and sometimes, unfortunately, in Japan specifically, a lot of people fall through these cracks, and unfortunately when they do, these same people can have a hard time getting out of them. Certain people can get out of those cracks and build a great life for themselves. Meanwhile, others will be so broken and torn that they can really make a horrible impact on society. And today we're taking a look at such a case. This is the story of the young Osaka sister Slayer. Let's get started. Yukio Yamaji was born in 1983 on August 21st in Osaka, Japan. He was born into a very poor family and at a very young age had already lost his father to a liver disease in January of 1995. So Yukio's life had already started off in the wrong path. The lack of a proper father figure in his life and living a poor life deprived him of the luxuries that others had, that of his peers, for example, in school. He didn't get to enjoy that, which left him in a position where anger would easily fester in this young man's mind. And as you already know, these things do start early. Some people can take a lot of damage at a young age, and down the line, it can prove fatal. Yukio would study, and eventually he would graduate from junior high school. And shortly after doing this, he would actually, well, drop out. He wouldn't continue school after this, and he would instead get a job at a newspaper store. And he would work there until the year 2000, when he would commit his first crime. So as mentioned, in the year 2000, Yukio would commit his first crime against the most unlikely of people. Little is known about Yukio's mother, but what we do know is the fact that she had mounting debt, which was crippling for the family, and given that Yukio now worked at the newspaper store, she decided to ask him for money again. She had done this multiple times. Yukio would oblige and give it to her. However, what happened next would be quite shocking. Yukio would figure out that the money he had lended to his mother had been spent differently from what he was told. But to add to it was also the alleged secret calls that Yukio's mother had with a woman that Yukio was in love with. This apparently angered him, as well as his mother complaining about his late father that had passed away. All of this, the complaints, the money, everything, compiled. And so on July 29th of the year 2000, Yukio grabbed a metal baseball bat in his home city of Yamaguchi, in Yamaguchi Prefecture, and at the age of 16 went ahead and attacked his 50-year-old mother until she had been beaten to her death. He would keep hitting her until the life was gone from her eyes. This would be the first murder committed by Yukio, and he would later say that killing his mother made him feel cleansed when he was interviewed. This is quite grim, actually. A psychiatrist that looked into Yukio and similar cases had learned that Yukio had been diagnosed as having Asperger's, putting him on the autism spectrum. But the expert named Ikatani points out that people with AS are actually predisposed to more violent and or criminal behavior if not handled and well taken care of at a young age. And since Yukio had grown up in abject poverty and only really received very short amounts of support in his life, this left him vulnerable to his conditions as well as his demons, and this was one of the things used in his defense later on. So, the first crime had been committed. After killing his mother, Yukio would then actually dial the police himself and turn himself in. So, his first crime, you would assume, would land him a life or death sentence in Japan. I mean, they have a lot of that over there, so why wouldn't they? I mean, he did straight up commit matricide, the act of killing one's own mother, so... What did he actually receive for a punishment? Well, due to his younger age, the court decided that he would not face a harsh punishment and he wasn't going to be given life in prison or the death sentence, but instead received a juvenile sentence and served that one with some supervision of psychiatrists and things along those lines. However, in 2003, he would be paroled. And this is where the mistake was made by the courts. Letting Yukio out was the worst thing they could have done as they had just doomed two more people to death. After his release, Yukio Yamaji was told by his grandmother that he should visit his mother's grave, which he replied to, I won't go where my mother is. And now, he was a free man, on probation, roaming the streets of Osaka. 
And so you might think, well, what would he do next? It had only been two years after his release when Yukio Yamaji would once again get the taste for blood and the desire to slay someone. And unfortunately, two people would come in his way. On the 17th of November 2005, a fire was reported in an apartment in the western part of the Osaka prefecture. The blaze would quickly be extinguished by the fire department, but once they entered the house and the apartment, what was found inside was quite grim. They discovered two bodies belonging to female victims, two sisters to be exact. One was 27-year-old Asuka Uehara and her 19-year-old sister, Chihiro. It was not instantly known what had happened, but it was quickly discovered by the coroner that both had been assaulted before the fire took them. They both had died before the fire had actually started. They had stab wounds in their chests and their face from a butcher knife, and both had been and both had been assaulted. Once the details were made clear, the police didn't take long to put suspicion on Yukio, as he actually lived in the same apartment block as these two sisters. And given that he had a criminal record specifically for murder, it was easy for them to bring him in for questioning. It turned out that Yukio knew the sisters, and he would actually have heard them multiple times from his own apartment. So, all of a sudden, it turned out that he had had the urge to kill once again, after the last time he did it towards his own mother. And so he had gone over to the apartment of theirs, made his way inside, and caught the older sister, Asuka, by surprise, and then sexually assaulted her, and then killed her. He then went after the other sister, and did the same to her, the 19-year-old Chihiro. But luckily, before he could commit any more horrible crimes like this one, Yukio was brought in and it was quickly figured out that he did it as he confessed to the crime saying, I can't forget the feelings I feel when I kill my mother and I wanted to see blood again. He told them where the murder weapon was, which was at a shrine a few hundred meters away from the apartment complex. He was then arrested promptly and charged for the two murders, and it was argued by the prosecution that he should be sentenced for the murders as fully functional, because he did it with purely the intention of getting pleasure for it. His defense, on the other hand, tried to argue that he could not tell the difference between right and wrong, and that he wasn't sane enough. His defense during the first court hearing would argue that after his release from juvenile detention school, he would have moved from place to place and stolen money from pachinko parlors, and they described how he had moved into the same apartment building as the sisters on the 11th of November, just a few days before the murder. The prosecutors argued that Yamaji Yukio had actually intended to rob the sisters and take money from them to live off of that, hence why he ended up also murdering them along the way. And... They really wanted to push for him to go full prison or death penalty. Well, guess what? Yukio's defense then informed the court that Yamaji had been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome and suggested that he was unfit to stand trial. The judge, however, accepted the other testimony of the prosecutors that Yamaji was mentally competent and should stand trial for the murders of the sisters. And in May of 2006, Yamaji pleaded guilty in Osaka District Court to the murders of the two sisters. So, he was guilty, but now the sentence had to be figured out, which was up to the judge. Would he have a lifetime sentence in prison or the death penalty? According to Yamaji himself, he had actually speculated that he would get the death sentence and had actually said, obviously I will be sentenced to death. I am not afraid of death. And even his own defense counsel said that he has no desire to live and his feelings do not extend to the life of another person either it will probably be impossible for him to sincerely repent from the bottom of his heart and so the judge sentenced yamaji to die for his crimes and said the following the defendant is demonically possessed with killing people victims were killed amid unimaginable fear and pain and it is inevitable that i have to hand down the capital punishment and according to the judge one of the reasons behind this sentencing was because Yamaji just did not reflect on his crimes. He didn't care and he even laughed at it. He suggested that if Yamaji had shown remorse for his actions, he would have received a more lenient sentence, most likely life in prison. But because of his lack of care, he was going to die. And so, the case was closed. It would take four years for the punishment to finally kick in, as in 2009, Four years after he had been arrested for the murders, 
he would be executed at the age of 25 years old alongside two other serial killers in Japan. One of these being Hiroshi Meao, who we actually covered in a previous video which you guys can check out. But he would be hung in the Osaka detention house and so his story and his crimes would finally be put to bed. However, the pain would still remain as several families now would be suffering because of the actions of Yukio. The question does remain, was he the main source of his own cruelty or did a large part of his world conditions influence it? Did the world cause him to become this? Did his situation cause this? People that do have mental issues or disabilities do tend to have to be more carefully handled and require a lot more help. So if one of these people falls through the cracks and doesn't receive the attention and care that they do need, they may end up becoming monsters that don't know how to cope with or handle their thoughts and feelings. Or perhaps Yukio was fully sane of a man who just enjoyed and relished in the pain of others and the death of others. That's up for debate. Thanks for watching. Nihilo. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in next week's video. Have a good one.